You okay? Yep. Yeah. This is kind of a hard. This is kind of a hard one. <laughs> Now, a lot of you know that Lou Reed passed away. It was just last Sunday, right, Dave? Yeah. Yep. Um, I found out about it. I was sitting uh, in a, a little bar on Smith Street, close to where I play. I went in to see a couple of friends and just hang out and kind of watch a little bit of the ball game. And I heard somebody mentioning uh, Lou Reed's name somewhere, and I... I just said, uh, what was that about Lou Reed? They said, Lou Reed just passed away. I said, get out. I, I was so shocked. I was going to be on the bandstand like in 20 minutes, and I just found out that Lou Reed passed away. Um, now, I'm not going to say I was intimate friends with Lou because I wasn't. But I met Lou, oh, jeez, back in the days of Danny Armstrong. When I first came to New York and I worked with Danny, and you all know some stories about that, but Lou was a regular person that came in at that time. This is during his days when, before he was Lou Reed, you know, and he was doing Velvet Underground and uh, the, the Walk on the Wild Side, a lot of that stuff but in the works, I think, I'm not sure. But um, over the years, different things, you know. Let's say I knew Lou, let's say I knew him in, I remember I made a little guitar way, way back in the 70s that ended up in one of those shops on on, on 48th Street, Richie's We Buy Guitar Shop. I, I forget that. I think that was the name of it. And he called me one day and he says, hey, Carl, that little guitar you made? I says, yeah. He says, guess who bought it? I says, I have no idea. He says, Lou Reed bought that little guitar. I said, really? <laughs> so I hadn't seen Lou a couple of years before that. And then uh, kind of lost track of him. And then, um, oh, over the last several years, we kind of got together again. And um, I made him a seven-string guitar. He was doing some special things with some special tuning of some kind. And he had a Stratocaster that he used to play regular stuff on, you know. And he called and said, you know, after playing my seven string, he just got so used to being comfortable with that, it was hard to go back and and do the thing on the fender. So he wanted them, he wanted the six string to go along with the seven string. And over the years <laughs> He had, I don't know, I forget how many guitars I made him. I think five or six, I forget. He has total, you know. So Lou was like a big supporter of mine, and I was a big supporter of his. I, I've always uh, given Lou so much credit for all the stuff that he did musically. He was, indeed, a fine musician. I know a lot of people who know me, and including young uh Hank Williams III, they, they have this idea about me being a jazz musician and being a purist and all that stuff. I mean, that's just not the case. I mean, I grew up with country music. I was, at one time I was the guitar player, but Billy Ward and the Dominoes, one of the biggest rock groups. I have a lot of influences in my life musically, and Lou certainly was one of them. And um, I know whenever I got that word on last Sunday, I was in tears. I, mean, I, I called his um, manager, his roadie, I should say, Stuart, and uh, I, I talked to his wife for a while, and she was crying, and I was crying. I knew him well enough to, to be that, that close anyway, and uh, he's certainly going to be missed here in New York. <laughs> Just like every paper, every magazine, lose pictures all over the place, and a lot of them are with my guitar, and it's just, uh, it's a great loss to this community, and Lou, just rest in peace, my friend, and keep swinging. I know you will. <laughs>